Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the board game The Great Race. You can choose which side of the board you like to use. On the other side is South America, but I'll show you this one of Africa. And you can always choose which side is the start and which is the finish. Either way, the game is played by the same rules every time. For this one I've chosen this purple space down south as the finish line. So let's get to it. You are going to play until one player reaches the finish line, in this case this spot here. Then that player pays the price to enter this space and is immediately completely out of the game. All the other players can finish their actions until they also enter the finish space. After that, the game is over. If you didn't reach the finish, then you have lost. All the other players that did reach get a scoring to see who the winner is. But again, you keep playing until one person has reached the finish line and then the game will end. If you have the most points, you are the winner. And it's those points at the end of the game that will determine who the winner is. Here's what you get points for. The person who reached the finish first gets 5 points. During the game your marker traveled with you all the way to the end and now you can move it backwards to keep track of scoring. The person who came in second gets 3 points. The person who came in third gets one point. You get points for how much money you have left. Every 50 money you still have counts as one point. And the last thing you get points for at the end of the game is where the dials are on your own player board, the dashboard. Every player has one of these and you get a point for where each of your three dials are at the end of the game. For example, if all my dials are at three, then I get nine points. So again, bonus points for who comes in first, second and third at the finish. Bonus points for money and bonus points for where your dials are on your own player board. Next, how do you play the game? You play the game in rounds and every round is four steps. It's also written on this card that you can keep with you during the whole game. Step 1. Take a card. Step 2. Plan your actions. Step 3. Execute your actions. Step 4. Determine the player order for the next round and maybe get some money. Let me go through that again in more detail. Step 1. Taking a card. At the start of each round you flip over as many cards from this deck as there are players plus 1. If I'm with three players, then I reveal four cards. And then, starting with the last player, everyone gets to take one card. The last player goes first, and then you go anti-clockwise back to the first player. When everyone has chosen a card, there will be one card left on the board. That card goes to the last player. So if you're last, you get two cards to keep during this part of the round. Step 2. Planning your actions. Each player has five of these assistants in their own color. In this part of the round, you hide your player board behind your screen and start placing your assistants on your board to plan your actions. You are allowed to place more than one assistant on each space. You can either place them on one of these three action spaces or on the money track to get money. When every player is done planning their actions, you remove the screen. 
and then everything has to stay as it was. You can't change things after seeing what the other players have planned. Step 3. Now is the time to execute what you've planned. You'll get your own turn. What do you do when it's your turn? When it's your turn, you do what it says on the other side of your own information card. Because there is a specific order. The first thing you can do, if you want, is pay money to get petrol. You need petrol to move your car on the game board. You can look at the game board for the price here. If you're in a city, that's one of these colored spaces, then you have to pay 10 money for each number you want to go up. You can go up to 5. If you're not in a city, then it costs you 20 money to go up for each number. You don't have to do this, but paying money to get petrol is only allowed at the very start of your turn. The next thing is play cards from your hand. Some cards are allowed to be played later, but most of them have this little green icon, which means you may only play it at this moment during your turn. You can't play them later unless the card specifically says so. The explanation for each card is written on this other information sheet that you can keep somewhere on the table. Also, there is a limit to how many cards you can have. You can have as many cards as where your dial is on this on your own player board. Here, this one. You are allowed to take new cards, but if you're over your limit, then you have to put back some cards on the discard pile. One little detail about that. If you have any cards that give you one petrol, you actually are allowed to play those in between taking new cards and discarding cards. That might be a handy trick to not have to discard cards. Anyway, the first thing you can do during your turn is use money to buy petrol. And after that, you can play cards from your hand and get whatever they give you. And then comes the last step of your turn. Removing one of your assistants from your player board and doing the action from the space you took it from. Only one and then it's the end of your turn. This is also the only thing that isn't optional. You must do this. If you don't want to do that, or maybe you have no assistants left, then you must pass and you are out of the round. You are allowed to pass if you still have assistants on the board, but you just can't use them anymore. Don't forget, you don't just go around the table. The player order is going by how the player tokens are placed on this track up here. I'll explain the actions in a moment, but this is what you do when it's your turn. Maybe buy petrol, maybe play cards, and then always remove one assistant to do the action. When all the players have passed, this part of the round is over. Before I explain what each action is, let me finish up what a round is. Step 4. Determine the new player order. Since this is a race to the finish, you'll be moving your own car on the game board. Every time your car moves further toward the finish, you also move your own player token along on this track. If my car goes from here to here, then I also slide my own token down with it. When all the players have passed, then you finish up the round by looking at this. The player whose token is the furthest ahead will be player number one for the next round. The token in second place will be player number two, and so on. And then... The new player number 1 gets 20 money from the bank. Player 2 gets 10 money. The other players get nothing. And if you're playing this with only 2, then only the first player gets money. So again, you finish up each round by looking at who is the furthest on this track and make a new player order up here. 
Number one and two, get money. That leaves me with one last thing to explain. What are the actions you can choose from? For that, you look at your own player board, your dashboard. Let's start with the money track. If you need money, then you place your assistant here. If you use one assistant, you place it all the way to the left. But if you want more money, you'll have to place more assistants here. You still go from left to right. For example, if I place three of my assistants here, then I can do this action to get 40 money. When it's my turn, I tell the other players I'm going to do the money action. I take 40 money from the bank and then I remove all the assistants. You don't remove only one, but all of them because you can only do this action once per round. This is how you get money. And then these other three. As you can see, each little space has two actions on them. When it's your turn and you remove one from here, it's up to you which of the two actions you want to do. If you put more than one assistant here, you can do the action more than once during this round, but only one action per turn. Let me start with the action in the middle. Place your assistant here to either move your car on the game board or move one of these two dials up here. The engine and the chassis, you can go up more than one. That depends on how many parts you have. You can have a part by discarding this card. This is a car part. For each of these cards that you discard, you can go up one space on one of these two gauges. Or, if you don't have any cards with parts on them, you can spend money. For that, you look here again. If you're in a city, then you have to pay 20 money per part. If you're not in a city, then it costs you 40 money per card. That's one thing you can choose to do when you remove an assistant from this action space. The other thing you can do with this space is move. You can move your little car up to as many spaces as where your dial is on the engine meter. You can stop moving sooner if you want, or sometimes you just have to stop. For example, when you reach a city, you must stop. And something else happens when you move. If you look at the game board, you can see all these spaces. I couldn't find it in the rule book, but I assume you're only allowed to move on cities and spaces that show this icon, not on empty spaces. You can also see that most of the board is empty, and some spaces have a tile on them. When you move your car onto an empty space, you have to stop and take one tile from this bag. You place it under your car and deal with it. Some cards say you have to go down in petrol, tiles, sorry. Some tiles will say you must stop. It will say so on the tile. If you can't find the information on this card, then you can always check the rule book for what an icon on a tile means. This is what you do when you move onto an empty space. But it's also possible that there is already a tile in front of your car. Maybe you put it there, maybe another play player placed it there. It doesn't matter, you can move onto it. And then again, you deal with it. You must do what it says on the tile. And don't forget, you can't move more steps than, you, than where your dial is on your engine gauge. So that's this action. Either move up the dials or move your car. Then the one on the left. Put your assistant here to either get one card from the deck or take two tiles from the bag and place them on the board. You know what taking a card means and you also know what these tiles are for. When you do this action, just grab two from the pouch and put them on the board. But there is a rule for that. 
You can't just place these tiles anywhere you want. You have to place the first one next to where your car is and the second one next to the first tile you placed. The last action space, this one on the right. Again, there's two things to choose from when you remove your assistant from here. The first one is remove a tile that is next to your own car. Only one that is next to you, not just any tile. And you don't put it back in the bag, it goes out of the game. The second thing you can use this action space for is to ignore a danger icon that is on a tile. And as you can see, it has a little lightning bolt next to it. Just like there is on the petrol card. This is one of those cards that you can play at any time. So that also goes for this action. When you have an assistant here, you can actually remove it whenever you want. Normally you can only remove one assistant per turn, but if you are moving your car as an action and you reach this tile that has a danger icon, you can remove this assistant to just keep moving. But that's it. Those were all the actions. Just a few details. You can play the game using these characters. They have a special ability that is active for the whole game. Just check the rulebook for what they do. It's very simple. Another thing is these spaces on the board. You are allowed to put your car on a boat. Pay the price, move your car all the way along the line, and pay petrol when you reach the next space. The last thing is these dark spaces on the board. If you step onto one of these spaces, you have to pay one more petrol extra than what it will say on the tile that you've placed there. We're done. This is how you play the great race. I hope you feel like you have a good sense of how it goes and that you'll enjoy playing it. Thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a comment and see you for the next one.